Hello everyone! Today it's the story of replacing my motorcycle's throttle cable. Just a disclaimer before we get started, I'm not an expert, I was doing this for the first time, and hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. First, I had to find the right throttle cable, which proved to be a little more difficult than I had anticipated. I got the wrong cable to start with, and then I ultimately found a cable on Amazon that I used. See, the cable I bought from the motorcycle shop is probably for a bigger bike than mine. It has the stoppers at the end of the cable are too big, so I needed to find one with the little tiny stoppers. But like, how do you know that until you go to put the wrong one in and it doesn't work? The process starts at the tops of the carburetors. I've got two carbs, and so I unscrewed the top of them. They are spring-loaded, and uh, then the throttle slide assembly comes out. You have to compress the spring uh, in order to get the cable slack to allow the stopper to remove from its little position, and then you can remove the spring and set everything aside. I was careful not to mix up the parts from the carbs to keep the right ones with the right side and the left one with the left side, just so that I wasn't introducing any extra variables that might come to haunt me later. But they did anyway, I'm getting there. The next thing to do is to unthread the throttle cable from the fork assembly area and so it's just attached at the throttle. For me, I had to take off the two screws that held together the clamping mechanism that holds the throttle to the handlebar and the mirror and the kill switch and then carefully provide some slack to the cable to remove the stopper at the other end of the cable that's inside the twisty part of the throttle. To install the new throttle cable, it was basically the reverse. I put the slack of the top end of the cable through the throttle assembly, got the stopper in the twisty bit, then clamped that handlebar part back on. Then I ran the two ends through the fork area and split them up to go to the two carbs. Then the ends of those cables go through the ring and the lid of the carb, and then you have to compress the spring over the slack on that cable before getting the stopper into its little position on the throttle slide and into its groove. Then you can let the spring compress into the throttle slide. Now here's where I made the mistake. The throttle slide has a groove on it, but it also has a groove on the other side, 180 degrees. Now I thought that it could only fit one way into the carb, and so when, as long as it fit down inside the carb, I thought I was all good. But no, there's two positions. There's one where it's just barely inside the carb, and then there's another one where it's much lower. And when it's just barely inside the carb, it means that the throttle is wide open. And I didn't know this, and I'm doing this for the first time, and so I hook it up, and I'm like, there's a little bit extra slack in it, it seems kind of weird. But my bike's in neutral, it's on its center stand, and I try to start the bike, and it just like, the engine just revs like crazy, and I hit the kill switch, and my heart is beating. It was very stressful, and I couldn't figure it out for a while. So I talked to a friend on the phone, and of course Smokey was there to help me troubleshoot, and we eventually figured it out. And then I just reassembled the carbs so that the, car the throttle slides went all the way down into the holes, and uh, then I was in business. So, uh... It's in the hole and you can close the carb, however, this is technically all the way open. So what re re really needs to be is 180 from there in that position and look at how much further down it goes to actually close the throttle and that's why it was racing and scaring the crap out of me earlier. So we put it back together that way and it is okay. After that, it came to adjusting the tension on my throttle cable. Now, I'm a little disappointed because this new throttle cable overall is a little bit longer than the one that I pulled out, but that shouldn't matter as long as the uh, tension is right, right? But this cable seems to just have a little bit more slack in it than the other one, and uh, in order to reduce and remove the free play on the throttle before it actually engages, I, I needed to make the adjustment knob come like as far down as it goes. So now what happens when my throttle cable stretches, I can't adjust it any tighter, and that's kind of disappointing. That's the whole reason I got a new throttle cable in the first place. So I also uh, adjusted it at the carb side just a little bit on both to try to re remove some slack so that I'd have some more adjustment room on the top end. Now, I think I could take the whole thing out, unscrew it a couple turns from where it meets up with the handlebars, and that might help, but um, 
at the end of the day, I, it was just so hot and I had already reassembled it like 18 million times and I just wanted to go home. So if you're more experienced in this than me, uh, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions. I had also intended on this day to do my valve clearance adjustments, but I just didn't have the energy at the end of the day. But I did, while the gas tank was off, replace the tappet covers with the new ones that I got. They provide a little bit of extra cooling and they also are super neat and they are also the only ones I couldn't find that were replacements for my bike but weren't like from a stock engine. Oh my god, there's like a millimeter of clearance between the pet cock assembly and the tappet cover. Oh nice. Like a millimeter. It's so it's not touching, but it's like really 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 close to touching lucky adventures in motorcycle maintenance right anyway if you want to watch my other motorcycle videos I made a playlist of them I'll link on the screen and below um, I have been narrowing down what I like to put in my motorcycle tool bag to have like roadside and shop side so uh, that'll help me in designing a motorcycle tool roll that is appropriately sized not too big not too small room for extra stuff anyway thanks so much for watching uh, don't forget I make other DIYs about crafts tech blogs about life in New York City and I would love if you'd subscribe thanks